Hey, and just a quick reminder that the audio-only versions of these Vital MX interviews are available on the Vital MX podcast page. Search for it anywhere you get your pods and let your friends know about it. What's up? This is Dark Side. This next Vital MX interview is from a recent episode of the Moto X Pod Show with factory Husqvarna mechanic Kate O'Grady, who recently wrenched for Dean Wilson and is currently wrenching for Thad Duvall in the GNCC. Check it out. What's up, Cade? Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing good, man. It has been a while since we've had you on, and your career path has been on an upward trajectory. Currently, just finished uh, wrenching for Dean Wilson, man. How was that? Oh, it was rad. It was really cool working for Dean and then just being with the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna crew. It's been awesome. How did that come about? Like, I think last year you were working with uh, Max Miller, right? Yes. Yep. Or even yeah, some so this year, I guess. I was even with some Max this year. for years. Yeah. Um, but when Nate Ramsey made the switch from Orange Brigade KTM to Rockstar, um, he got in contact with me after Supercross was over and said he had a job for me with Rockstar. And I wasn't sure who I was going to be working with. But I kind of I started off just as like a, a floater, just helping out wherever around the shop and just practice days and whatnot. And then they didn't have a guy for Dean when he came back off an of injury. And yeah, I, I lucked out basically. Well, and I want to get more into that. But first, I want to get a little bit of your background. So and like talk about the progression from there, working with privateer teams and privateers and working your way up. Like how has that gone? How did those steps happen? It's been pretty crazy. Um, I've definitely lucked into a lot of positions and I've put in a lot of, a lot of long hours, a lot of sleepless nights getting here, but yeah, I did uh, 2017 and ending in 2018. I attended the pro SX MX tech school in Morgantown, West Virginia taught by Scott Atkins and graduated out of that. It was about an eighth month long program. And like you said, when I met you, we were at um, St. Louis Supercross and I was there handing out resumes, just talking to people, trying to get my foot in the door because I had zero race experience besides just local stuff. Yep. And I talked to you and you had set me up with Travis Del Necki and that was the first race I'd ever worked. And I literally was handing out resumes to 30 minutes later being on the floor of my first Supercross race, <laughs> wrenching for him. So I, I am the key to your success. I mean, obviously. Uh, you definitely, you started the ball, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, so at some point when you're working for a guy that wins a championship and you get a bonus, you just remember that. <laughs> I'll, take I'll, give, I'll give you a shout 10%. out for sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> shout out. All right, Kate, I like it. Yeah, I like it. You're not an agent. You know? No, I don't get the 10% no, of the 10%. No, no percent. Damn. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really cool to see your, how things have gone, man. I mean, I, I feel like it was at Houston a couple years ago. You were wrenching for somebody. And, and oh, hey, here, Let me rephrase how I want to bring this up. Tell me, like, what's the worst mistake or the biggest thing you've done at, you know, at a race that was like a full panic mode. Oh, and you had to bring up Houston. Yeah. So <laughs> 2019, I was working for JMC Husqvarna. Um, the rider was Chris Howell that year. Yep. It was, it was pretty chaotic. I was building the engines while well, Chris and I were building the engines. Um, and that year, I don't know what I was thinking, I got in a rush after washing the bike and I left the blue paper towel in the air box <laughs> and I came back to the truck, fired the thing up and sucked a rag into the motor. I've done that. Me too. We so no, I, I have to. Yeah. I think everybody's done it. Yeah. But it's really bad when you're at a super cross <laughs> race and you got to race that day. Yep. So full panic mode, ripped the engine out sent Chris off running around to other guys looking for a valve spring compressor because we didn't have one. Got the head torn off, got the valves ripped out of it. Luckily, none of the valves were bent. It didn't damage anything. We were able to shut it off in time. But there was a good two hours of me sitting there with a pick trying to pick all the little pieces <laughs> of blue paper towel out of that cylinder head. It's a <laughs> terrible feeling when you do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I ran into Cade like – shortly after i think they got the bike back together and he was like oh my god you won't believe what i did type thing and i was yep. like oh like the, you just gotta think 
in that pressure cooker situation and how like the team's probably like, what the hell are we doing? You know, like yeah. who knows what everybody's thinking. Like, I can't imagine what you were going through that day. It was, it was stressful. Yeah. It was not very fun. It was not fun, but that night ended up semi well. We made it, made it to the main events. It was a triple crown that night. Yeah. So we made it in, raced all three rounds. Um, that was the same night. Chris, well, AC crashed off the over under bridge and Chris ran into the back of him and went over the bars. <laughs> and when he did that, he snapped both sides of the subframe Jeez. and being a privateer team, we didn't have spare subframes. So it was safety wire and zip ties to try to hold that thing together. <laughs> and for Supercross, winners take all. For Supercross, yeah. <laughs> and he stood up for all three main events because the subframe was broken. Because you can't see so, belts. Yeah. So you can't seat bounce like that either in, in Supercross. No, yeah, there is no seat bouncing. If you seat bounce, the whole <laughs> rear end of the bike would have just fallen off. Yeah, there was... Okay. It was... Uh, that was probably one of the worst weekends of my career. Yeah. I mean, the, the subframe thing wasn't my fault, but still, like, yeah. It's just a it bad wasn't, day, yeah. It wasn't a highlight, that's for sure. But I think that's, <laughs> like... That's good for character and like, okay, like it taught you something, you know, like be more careful. Like it's, you, you have to have those, right? Ever there's no way that any of the mechanics on the starting line at Supercross and outdoors haven't had that same day. No. And that's luckily Thule from AMA. He came up to me and he patted me on the back that same day and he goes, Hey, I've been there. I've done it. 90% of these other mechanics in this field have done it. Yeah. It's yeah. what you take from it and what you've learned. And what, how you move on afterwards. Yeah. And so if you look, I will never put a blue rag in an air box again. <laughs> if I put anything, it's a yellow microfiber because it cannot get sucked into the throttle body. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How, how was it this last few rounds working with Dino on his way out? I, I texted him at, so after I saw you at Paula that day, about a month ago on pra the practice day. Uh -huh. I texted Dean. I was like, Hey man, how, how's it working with Kay? And he goes, like, he said, he's really good. Like he said, I was, I wasn't sure to begin with, cause you know, he didn't know who you were, but he said, he's really good. So how was it working with him as a rider? He, he told me he was definitely a little nervous, which yeah. is totally understandable. He has no idea who I am. And I'm just a, another guy showing up saying I can work on a dirt bike, but working with Dean was awesome. He is so down to earth and he's just, just like with most of these guys, he's just another dude that just happens to be really fast on a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. But he is so humble, so kind. He was just, it was just really fun working with him. That's good. Yeah, he's a good guy. I, I love hanging out with him. So yeah, he's a great guy. Coming up, re re wrenching for, like right there where you're actually building motors, where we were talking about before, to working for Dean. Like, how is it there? Because I know a lot of the, top riders like that you're not doing every nut and bolt you're not tearing the bikes down grips and graphics it's, yeah I, I know it's more than grips and graphics how does it differ to you it's been a big switch going from the miller program who i was with before to rockstar husky where with with the millers i was doing basically everything motorcycle related minus the suspension so doing all the chassis stuff. I'd show up to Twisted Development. I'd build our practice engines, build our race engines. I would go into the dyno room with Jamie while he was messing with stuff, and I'd swap parts, try to trying to find power and all that. And then now with Rockstar, I, we have a suspension guy. He walks in and hands me a set of suspension. Our engine guys wheel over engines and set them on my bench. So now my sole focus is the chassis, which is – it's nice. Parts of it are less stressful, but now – it's trying to develop the chassis better to where as before I didn't have as much time. So now it's just solely just figure out this chassis, try to make changes, see what's going on, listen to what your writer's comments are, make notes of it. And then being factory, I have to relay this information to my managers and they have to relay it to their managers. So <laughs> yeah. it's been a big change. Very corporate. Definitely very corporate, yeah. Hey, I saw that you worked with Thad this last weekend too, right? In the GNCC, how'd that go? And like, are you just, are that what you're going to do is you're going to float from where, just wherever they tell you to go? Well, so when I signed on with Rockstar, I was hired on to be an off-road mechanic. Okay. But um, the Moto Supercross team needed a guy just for the outdoor season. So 
luckily my manager anthony from off-road was kind enough to lend me to the moto side for six months or three months i'm sorry um so i was able to work with dean but now that the outdoor season is over i'm going to be full-time on the off-road side and so this weekend was my first gncc with thad the ball and sure enough i luckily i i walked into a podium finish this weekend so it was pretty pretty cool how does it differ because you're you're on a top level team with dean wilson one of the stars of the sport going to a top level team one of the stars of the sport of of off-road how does your like is it yeah you, it's pretty much that you do the same stuff or you do you have more responsibilities less how and how is that so we do basically the same stuff what's been different with with what I've been going with is with the moto side, we've been on the, the new chassis is what we're calling it. The yeah. 2023, 22 and a half, 23. Yeah. And yeah. then with off road, they don't have all like our biggest issue is we don't have the oversized tanks yet for the 23 models. So right. we're still having to use the 2022 models. So that part's been a little different as I'm bouncing back and forth between two completely different chassis. Right. So, and everything from setting changes to how you route your wiring harness to parts, everything is 100% different. The mm, new yeah. bike was built from the ground up with basically nothing fitting from the old bike. Right. So, I'm having to memorize two completely different bikes and be able to do everything on them. And then it's really tough with the off-road is setup is completely different. We have solid rotors from drilled and slotted we have the big oversized fuel tank so just the the whole setup on the off-road bikes is completely different from suspension to oversized fuel tanks to solid rotors we're running different brake pads so they last longer and then uh just skid plates that cover the linkage and just a bunch of stuff that's yeah really foreign to me because i come (laughs) from a motocross and supercross background so it's been a, another really steep learning curve this past two weeks getting onto the off-road scene of things. But so far this last weekend, I've really enjoyed it. It's a completely different scene from the moto side, but yeah. it's really fun. That's what I was going to ask. How is that? Like when like you're the day of the event, the stuff, day of the yeah. event stuff is there is because like the pits are just open to everybody. Yeah. Right? Are there fans coming up like, Hey, can I get his plastic? <laughs> That, well, that, so that's what's weird, too, is I was expecting that. Yeah, but, and I don't think I had a single person ask me for anything. All they wanted to do was say hi, shake my hand, ask a couple questions about that or the bike or different things. But it's completely open pits. You've got motorcycle riders. You've got quad riders. They have an e-mountain bike series that races that whole thing. So you have three different groups of people coming together that are all just focused on an out or a, an off-road event. So... Everybody's like-minded, but yeah. we all have a little bit different goals in there. Okay. But it's it's crazy. And then the biggest thing for me is we race on Sundays now. So that that threw a whole nother curve for <laughs> right, me. Right. <laughs> Multiple years of Saturday yeah. racing. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, man. I was saying at the beginning of the show, that's the most fun bike I've ever rode. The 23 Husky 350 is by far the most fun bike I've ever been on. The 350 is has got to be one of my favorite bikes also. And then just behind that is the 501s. Those things are awesome for on-road and off-road. You can go literally anywhere on them. You remember a couple of years back when KTM had the 525s? They were like a motocross uh, bike? Uh-huh. God, can you imagine putting a 501 no. motor in a moto bike? <laughs> oh, sign me up twice for that. I want to ride that. Uh, yeah, think- well, I actually I just ordered a 23 501. And I'm planning on, I, I figured it out. I got a couple cylinder heads and pistons options that I can put in it. And the thing should be a ripper. So if you come out to California when I got it done, I'll let you take it for a spin. Uh, it's going to be set up for moto? Yeah, it'll oh. be a it'll be a dual sport, but I'm setting it up for moto. Oh, that'd be, you ride it That's to cool. the track yeah. and then go. <laughs> I'll, be out exactly. there, well, I'll be out there for vet. Na- <laughs> hey, you want to come out and be my wrench for vet nationals? If I'm free, yeah, let's do it. Because yeah, he's 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 challenged Steve Mathis yeah, yeah. to see who wins out of uh, out of their signed up in the yep. same class. So 
Oh, yeah. I'm definitely doing it just for bragging rights over Steve. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just rub it in his face a little bit. Well, here's the thing. This <laughs> puts, if I win. This puts more pressure on Jamie to have Man. to actually beat him. I don't really feel any pressure on it, to be honest. I, it's, I don't. I'm just like, it's going to be fine. It is, yeah, I, I yeah, think you better, I, Look, you're going to have a factory. You had Dean so, Wilson's factory mechanic yeah, yeah. working for you. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I'm really proud of you, man. It's really cool to see the progression, you know. I mean, it really hasn't been that long. What, four? I see that's, what, four years? Four, yeah, yeah, four, yeah, years? four years, yeah. Good for you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Especially going from Rockstar Husky from, I mean, the Rides Rockstar of... Rockstar Husky? Yeah, Rockstar Husky <laughs> from, like, Rides Unlimited. That was a loose program over there. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a good program. They definitely... They're making, they're taking strides to get better. Yes. But I, it's, it's just with anything they're they've been, this is, I think their second year pro. Mm -hmm. So they're learning every time they show up to a race. They let us I know they out, had a so couple they, bit, a couple of staffing issues. And so they get comfortable with the guy and somebody would leave. So every weekend it got better. So I give them credit. They're trying. Okay. <laughs> it's been great checking in with you, man. Um, Really glad we finally got a chance to keep, uh, catch up. And do you think there's any chance you'll be back on the moto side in 23, or are you definitely off road for the full year? I'm definitely off road for the full year. Um, I'm not sure. I have to. It's kind of. I just have to apply for it, basically, if I want to. Yeah. Um, I'm going to run this next year and just see how it goes. Okay. So far, I'm really enjoying it. So I could just stick with it. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to get get a year under my belt and learn a lot and see how I like it and then make a decision from there. As of now, I'm sticking with the off-road, but in the future, we'll see what happens. Well, good for you, man. Again, I'm proud of you, and it really is, I love seeing you uh, be successful. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was, it was pretty cool thinking back on when I when I talked to you the first time yeah. four, four years ago, whatever it was. And Episode I listened 70. to the show back and I was like, holy cow, I sounded like a 12 year old. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sounded pretty crappy back then too. Hopefully we sound better now. So yeah, we've all yeah. grown. We've all grown a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, great talking to you, man. Um, I hope to see you around, even if you just happen to make a couple, you know, the super crosses or maybe I'll see you at Glen Helen. I'll, I'll get it with you leading up to that and see if you're free. Yeah, please do. If I have have some time off, I'd love to do it. That'd be fun. All right, Kay. Thanks, man. Good talking to you. Good talking to you, too. Thank you. All right. See you, buddy. Bye.